Brothers and sisters, settle, settle. I come to you this day with great news. My starry disciples, our search is nearly complete. For decades we've toiled and scoured and fished about this wretched continent for that ever-elusive tome, the Grimoire Eternus, the book to end all books, the storied and long fabled, the Necronomicon! Yes, Sister Halo, that's, that's the one. Next time, maybe you let the actual cult leader speak its eternally horrible name, yeah? Thank you. The, uh, <clears throat> the Necronomicon! Yes! No doubt some among you have questioned its very existence. Our search has been wide and our labor great, with as yet no return. Well, brothers and sisters, it may be that we have come upon its actual location. Uh, Brother Bright. Gregory. Gregory! We talked about this, man. This night, brothers and sisters, our men... And women? <sighs> and women are on their way to retrieve that tome as we speak. Is this not what we've been looking for since our establishment is a legitimate death cult? Yes! Is it not in our official membership charter? Yes! Is it not we who should be the first and only to lay our hands upon it? Yes! Shall we let the abominable butcher or other lesser cults get their stinking paws on our glorious bounty now that it is so closely within our reach? Yes! No! No! And with the Necronomicon finally in our hands, nothing will stop the Haunter from regaining his true form. No end to the work! No end to the work! So where is it? We have found him, brothers and sisters. The man who will lead us to it. We have found him, and we watch. We watch. Read all about it, sir. Hurricane Herbert, storm of the century. A storm. Hmm. That's the least of my worries. Change. Everything's changing. Always changing. What's a Joe supposed to do? You take a new case and it's all you can do to be prepared for whatever it throws your way. The only thing you can know is whatever it's tossed at you won't make any kind of sense but up against the last thing. It's the change, you see. I've been hired to locate some kind of ancient book. It's supposed to have inside of it the kind of stuff that makes the Joe's guts turn salt and sallow. Real type mystical mumbo jumbo, which I guess explains the weirdo cults popping up all over Darkham. You know something's left to center when the folks hiring you want to keep themselves all secret like. Cash is cash though, and I could really use the milk. That something doesn't change. I put some weight on my man in rare and forbiddens. The kind of pressure makes a Joe's stomach jack flip, and he points me at this dark and ancient library. Dark and ancient? Huh. What's not dark and ancient in Darkham? Damn. Most times, the new is just as bad as the old. Sometimes worse. Well, here it is. Miskatonic Library. Not the, uh, friendliest place in town. And this town and friendly ain't even in the same zip code. Darkham. Horrible hellhole. Never thought I'd stick around when I came here, 23 years ago. She was local, young and unstable. And I was probably too much to handle. Then she left me with an empty bottle of 81 proof and a broken heart. Huh. My gut instinct was telling me I could look at everything a second time, glean extra information that might be useful, or not. The brooding, festering horror of the ancient town. Weird, that just popped into my head from nowhere. A sea of rotting roof tiles, decaying masonry, and who knows what dormant evils. Now, I gotta investigate the library first.
Not nearly as badly lit as the name would suggest, but more than compensating on the creepy scale. Not your prettiest tourist-friendly town. Surprisingly colorful here and there, but I didn't let that fool me. The town had been bubbling with occult activity for a while, and I was about to look deep into it. Like a sea of ugly, decrepit, tile-covered whales. There's tiny graffiti on it. Stay in school. I guess it's an advice column. The Pillars of Knowledge. Or just, you know, supporting masonry. Looks like some kind of gargoyle, swallowed almost whole by those dead vines. I'd love to blame it on modern art, but this is really ancient stuff. It's just creepy as hell. You know, they uh, really have a vegetation problem out here. It's like these crazy vines are strangling the edifice in a real symbolic way, you know? Crescent moon, shining down on the horrid husk of a town that is Darkham. I guess we can use all the light we can get in this dump. They really went out of their way to make this place as creepy as possible. I'll bet the common Joe doesn't even know what a bass relief is. I'd wonder exactly what that bass needs relief from. The oppressive, stagnant atmosphere of Darkham. A trudging, boring life stuck in a library interior. An uncertain future in the face of an uncaring populace. The ridiculousness of this fish pun? I don't know. No one can be sturgeon. Ah, who gives a carp? Rows and rows of moldy old books. For some reason, they seem particularly unattractive. The more I look at them, the less interesting they get. The joy of reading. Those look like the exception. That's where folks get strange, ancient diseases by flipping the wrong pages with their bare fingers. Wear protection. Goes for libraries, too. Nobody there. Looks like it's just me and this librarian fella. It's a dusty old book. Its title's really hard to read. A very convenient treatise on the order voodoo magic ingredients should be used in. Useless garbage. It's the popular book section. Apparently, all Daniel Maroon novels. You know, Vatican mysteries and all that. Daniel Maroon's Anathemic Adventures. Daniel Maroon's blood-boiling baptism. Daniel Maroon's clerical conundrums. Daniel Maroon's deacon's debauchery. Sounds spicy. Daniel Maroon's eucharistical enigmas. Daniel Maroon's fathers and fedoras. My personal favorite. Daniel Maroon's gibbous gospel. Daniel Maroon's Hymn Hunting. I hear it's a snoozer. Daniel Maroon's Improbable Iconostasis. Daniel Maroon's Jump in Jerusalem's. It was his first foray into comedy. Still sold a heap, though. Daniel Maroon's Cryptic Cloisters. Ah, he was reaching. 
Daniel Maroon's lengthy litany, 4,200 pages. Ouch. Daniel Maroon's menacing monastery mystery. Daniel Maroon's nuns and nooses, oh boy. Daniel Maroon's Presbyterian perils. Daniel Maroon's queer clephotic quests. Sounds particularly exciting. Daniel Maroon's reliquary rapture. Daniel Maroon's The Sacramento Sacrament. Daniel Maroon's Theological Tenabra. Daniel Maroon's Unholy Unctions. Daniel Maroon's Vinci's Vengeful Vigils. That makes no sense. Daniel Maroon's Warring Worshippers. No entry for X or Y. Can't blame him. And finally, Daniel Maroon's The Zesty Zealot. It's like that strange tentacled beast is watching me. That thing is very unnerving. I feel like poking it in its plaster eyes. That desk is literally blocking my access to knowledge. A little on the plain and ugly side, too. If my detective cylinders aren't misfiring, that's gotta be the librarian. Who would grab and stick to this kind of job in this kind of place? They must have fish hooked them. Free internet will do that to a Joe. This librarian looks a few centuries short of the age requirement. Evening. Good evening, sir. Interesting library you got here. Is it old? Yeah, pretty old. It's old, huh? How old? Like really, really old. You might even say it's ancient. Ancient, huh? How ancient? Well, it was established by one Jeremiah Orne in, uh, let's see, um, 18... Uh, really, really long time ago. Huh. Thanks for the info. Sure. So, how's things in the library business? Uh, you know, can't complain. It's a living. Those uh, electronic books hitting you folks hard these days? <laughs> nah, not really. People don't tend to read much at all anymore, so uh, it's all the same to us. Hmm. The name's Katype. Don R. Katype. Here to see about a book. <laughs> well, you've uh, come to the right place. Yeah. It's called the uh, Necronomicon. Do you have it? Oh, that book. Yeah. Uh, let me check. Yeah, they're all lent. All versions of it. There's more than one? Why, sure, you've got your... Oh, wait, you're talking about the real Necronomicon, aren't you? Yeah, no, sorry, that doesn't actually exist. Doesn't exist, huh? My employer seems to think otherwise. An ancient grimoire full of arcane writings that could summon powerful demonic entities and potentially fold reality onto itself? We don't really carry that kind of stuff here. Chances are, it's nothing but a myth, Mr. Katype. You, uh, wouldn't happen to be intentionally trying to conceal it from me, would you? I'm just a librarian, sir. As far as I know, the real Necronomicon is a myth. Sorry to disappoint you. You haven't been the first to come and ask about it, and you probably won't be the last. Definitely our most popular inexistent book. Who else has been interested in it? Everyone, from excitable teenagers to these freaky cultist types that seem to crop up everywhere in the last few months. Just when you thought Darkham couldn't get any weirder, these clowns come along and prove you so wrong. What can you tell me about these cultists? 
Well, they come in all shapes and sizes, can't really tell them apart. I mean, it's not like they waltz in here dressed up in ceremonial robes or anything, but you can tell from the way they speak, they're not all there. Hmm. No such thing as the Necronomicon, you say? Mind if I, uh, snoop around your collections a little while? I don't mind personally. You'd have to talk to Mr. Orne about the rare books department, though. At the moment, he's really busy with some new arrivals upstairs, so you'd have to wait a while. But, sir, waste of time, really. That book is just a legend. An ugly, ugly legend. Aren't you a bit young to be a librarian? <laughs> Look, I can tell you come from a, a different era, but between you and me, that's straight up ageist. Oh, really? And that, uh, different era business ain't? <laughs> Touché, Mr. Katype. I'm a student, it's a job, it's quiet, it, it pays the bills. Aren't you a bit too old to be a student? <laughs> I like the cut of your jib. That's something your type would say, right? My type? Now look here, son. <laughs> there it is again! Ugh. I didn't catch your name, Mr... Kerwin. Buzz Kerwin. That's an interesting surname and an accent that I can't quite place. Yeah, I'm, I'm half Romanian. My mom was born in Transylvania. I kept her family name because it sounds cool, you know? Never get teased because of that. No, no. For Buzz, on the other hand, <laughs> plenty. All right, Mr. Kerwin. I guess I'll have to wait. There's a thing on the doorstep there. Looks like a package. It ain't for my nose, but I could, uh, pass it on to the librarian. I found this thing on the doorstep. Were you expecting a package? No, not really. Let's see it. There's a note here. Oh, it's for you. For me? What, what does it say? Too long have you meddled in our business, Katype. Here's your chance at a bright future for a change. <laughs> is it me or is this thing ticking. Mr. Katai! He's gone. Was that you making all that racket, Kerwin? No, Mr. Orn, sir. Someone set off a bomb in here. I was about to call the police. Nonsense. You call this a bomb? You should have seen Dresden, son. Now that was some firepower right there. Clean up a little, will ya? I... Uh, okay, sir. Well, at least that thing took some damage. I think it's a little loose now. There's a weird glow emanating from behind it. What the... It's sure to fall off and kill someone whenever the next earthquake hits. That monstrous cracked medallion is literally an accident waiting to happen.
It's Mr. Katype's shoe. Well, I feel like I should call him Don now that we've been through this together. It's Don's shoe. It's Don's shoe. It's all he's left behind. I just realized how long I've actually wanted to do this. Don sends his regards, ugly. Is... is this what Don was after? This looks nothing like the other editions. Creep factor just went up 200%. Who would hide it up there? And why? You're coming with me, weird book. Well, I never thought I'd actually say this, but the Necronomicon feels weird in my pants. Oh boy, what an evening. Think, boss, think! Don's been kidnapped. The police are a bunch of corrupt and incompetent tools. What do I do? Well, Orn can close up for the night. Things are way too messed up to stick around. The best thing to do is retreat to the bus cave, clear my head, and see what this strange book is all about. <sighs> okay, safely home. What, what the hell was all that about? Is this really happening? Am I really talking out loud to myself? What is this book? God, I need to stop talking to myself. I sound crazy. Kitty, should I open this thing and see what's written in it? What do you say? <sighs> You're a lot of help. Okay, might as well take a peek. Ia, Ia, Kashaptu Zidinjir Kampa, Per Adonai Methatron. What the? This is genuinely becoming really scary now, and I'm all alone. What do I do, Kid A? God, I wish you could talk back for once. Okay, I know I've been saying everything felt weird before, but that was really, really weird. Something feels very different now. As much as I hate agreeing with you, something does feel very different now. I know, right? Maybe reading that out loud wasn't such a good idea, huh? It sure seems so. Right? I mean...